Next, pre next presenter, who's garnered international media attention for his undercover reporting on Gator Street therapy programs. He's a journalist who frequently covers religion. Uh, he said. <laughs> it that has stirred the country, speaking to packed rooms about ex gay programs, the Mormon temple ceremonies, the pro life movement, and various other forms of religious quackery. He contributes to a number of print and online publications and blogs at iheartcox.com, and he's also a member of the SSA Speakers Bureau. Today he'll be presenting on events from a speaker's perspective. Help me in welcoming Ted Cox. <laughs> How do I start the timer? Stop. Start. There it goes. Hi, everyone. Evan, I hurt you. I miss you. Uh, thanks uh, for waiting through those technical difficulties, which is uh, kind of interesting because it actually ties into what I'll be talking about today. Um, my name is Seth Cox. been a member of the Speakers Bureau for actually going on three years now. Um, when I talk about having a happy speaker, what I'm really talking about is having um, speaker events that go smoothly, um, having events, rooms that are packed, um, and how to do that. A lot of the things that I will be sharing today are common sense, um, but also everything that is in here is in here because it's come up in the past as some kind of issue or problem. Um, hosted speaker events before at your campus. Oh, cool, Brad. All right, so um, a lot of these things, again, you probably know this stuff, but uh, some of the things I'm going to share will surprise you probably. Um, your speaker events are important. Um, they help people um, become introduced to secular thinking. People who may not want to show up to a club event because they're worried about what they'll find or you know, um, worried about like maybe being discovered or outed for going to such an event. Um, they may not go to their clubs, but they may be more inclined to go to public events where it gives you a reason to be in um, And also, when you have good events with lots of people, it helps challenge this idea um, that there is a minority of secular people. Um, it, it shows that there are a lot of people interested in talking about secular issues. Greta, most of the pictures that I found of you, you have your arms raised up like that. It's, it was pretty awesome. So, Anyway, um, so... These are 15 things um, that you can do to make your speaking events more awesome. Um, they are out of order, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Uh, first one, you want to start planning early. Again, this is a common sense thing. Uh, you have to work around your campus calendar. You have to work around your group calendar. You have to work around your speaker schedule. You have to plan hotels and flights and stuff like that. So, you know, last minute stuff generally does not work out. Uh, when you contact your speaker, it's a good idea to have a couple of dates in mind um, in case one date doesn't work out. So um, start with the date that you want, but also have a couple of backups ready just in case. Because um, a lot of times during the planning process, something comes up where the date's not going to work out. Um, to, oh, I'm sorry. On page 36 of your conference books, you have a handout. I don't know if you guys know that. So you can follow along and take notes and stuff. Um, tip number four of the 15, uh, respond promptly to emails. Um, it, usually you don't want to wait more than a couple days. Um, it's good to have good communication. And this also goes for speakers as well who are here or who will watch this later. Um, sometimes I have the bad habit of not responding to emails as well, but really a good part of communication is that you respond to messages. Even if you don't have an answer to a question, uh, for something you don't know, just let the other person know that you got it, that you read it, that you're trying to figure it out so that no one's left in limbo. Uh, right away, you want to figure out what your speaker's requirements are, um, where they want to stay, how they're going to get there. Uh, do they want to be reimbursed, or do they want your group to pay for things up front? Um, when they prefer to travel, how long they want to be there, how they're going to get around. Also, again, this is for speakers. You, all speakers, you should have a list of your requirements um, saved somewhere so you can just copy and paste it so that the groups also know right away what kind of things you're expecting. So this will help cut down on confusion. Uh, this especially comes up when uh, the SSA is involved in long speaking tours, like week-long trips. It's hard to figure out like who's doing what and what, you know, what order and who's paying for what. So this is something you want to nail down uh, right away. Also, please let us know your expectations. Um, what do you want us to talk about? How long, how much time do we have? Do you want us to participate in question and answers? 
Um, you want us to come to like a club meeting beforehand or after or the day before. Um, you want us to hang out with you guys afterwards, you know, go out for dinner or something like that. Um, how do you want us to promote it? So let us know what you guys are thinking. Let us know uh, where you need us to be and when because that helps us plan things. Um, generally, when I'm traveling and speaking, I'm not a big fan of surprises. Like, I, I like to know what's going to happen beforehand just in case there's some kind of other scheduling or something else that is supposed to be going on as well. Um, number seven, when you book the, the, the room for your speech, please do it through your official university channel. Um, don't assume that the room that you've always used at 7 o'clock on Thursday night will be open at 7 o'clock on a Thursday night when you have an event scheduled. True story, uh, walked into one room to learn that a professor was using it for a midterm. Um, so again, when you are picking a room, you want to make sure that it is booked officially through your school. And most of your uh, uh, schools will have some kind of online form for doing that. Number eight. This actually ties into what you saw just a few minutes ago while we were fiddling around with the computer. Um, before your event, and I mean way before your event, you want to send someone with some kind of technical skills to look at the room. Make sure that the room is unlocked. Um, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, each of these questions is on here because this is an issue that I have run into at some time uh, throughout uh, my speaking career with the FSA. Going to a room and finding out that it's locked. Trying to open up the AV cabinet, that it's locked. The AV system needs a password and someone doesn't have it. So before you have your event, send someone there beforehand to check it out, hook up their computer, make sure everything's worked, figure out where all the buttons are for things, figure out where the microphones are and how to turn them on and off. Um, so I would recommend like at least a week in advance have someone go and check that stuff out. Number 11, make sure the hotel room is actually paid for. Yes, this problem has come up. Um, when you're, if your group is booking the room, um, the person who, who uses their credit card generally has to be there when the guest is checking in. So whoever makes the payment on their credit card has to be there to show the credit card on check-in. possible, some hotels will accept a credit card authorization form. Um, you have to fill that out in advance, send a copy of the credit card and all that stuff. Um, it, it really sucks when you're traveling to find out that your room is not paid for it yourself and then hope to get reimbursed in some kind of timely fashion. Um, so again, make sure that the room is actually paid for. Number 10, help your speaker get around. Now, it's kind of hard to read the text at the top of that uh, search box. Getting around in a new town can be very difficult, even when you have the world's most powerful search engine in your pocket. To illustrate this, before coming here today, I searched for the name of this room, the Philip J. Cohen Theater, on Google Maps. These are the results that I got. The Monte Carlo Resort and Casino and the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I tried several different configurations of searches to try to find this room on Google Maps and this is the best I could come up with. And I'm doing this to illustrate that sometimes the name of buildings um, on your campuses are very hard to find. Um, hotel room can be hard to find. Um, some speakers will prefer to have someone meet them on campus to help them get to the room somewhere. So just keep in mind that when you are in a new city, finding places can be difficult. Um, so keep that in mind for your speaker. Be social. Um, we like you guys. We like your groups. We like the work that you're doing. We like to hear your stories. We like to know what kind of challenges you um, So it's a lot of fun for us to be able to hang out with you guys you know, before or after the events, you know, after we're relaxed, you know, talk about things, you know, have a beer or milk or whatever it is that, that you like to drink. Um, but, you know, especially if your speaker has been on the road for a few days, like it can get lonely, like just going to the airports and you know just staying in hotels. It's nice to actually have like real social human interaction. Number nine, please bring your speaker. Um, personally, the only reason I request an honorarium um, is to cover the time off that I have to take from work, where I'm not getting paid. 
for speaking events, I usually have to miss two or three days of work. Um, and I also, you know, have to pay for things like food and airports, you know, and restaurants, things like that. Kind of hard to do home cooked meals in a hotel room that are cheap. Um, so I, I asked for $250 to just cover my expenses, basically, because if I don't do it, I'm losing money. So please pay your speakers. Um, this quote is from a fellow SSA Speakers Bureau member. Um, it, it sucks to have to wait to get paid. My current record right now is waiting nine weeks. And that just sucks. Imagine like waiting like nine weeks for your paychecks for your job. You know, that cell phone company, you know, they, they have their deadline, and so do I. So please pay your speakers. Now, the reason that I'm sharing these tips out of order, because as I was writing this speech, I realized that five of them deal with the same issue, the empty room. Um, this is like the worst part of speaking. Nothing is worse than flying across a continent to speak to a room and there are only six people inside. And that has happened. Um, the last five tips that I'm sharing are addressing how to fill an empty room. Um, tip number five, pick the right date. Um, check your campus calendars. Uh, make sure that you're not scheduling on the day of some major sporting event. Um, you know, midterms and final weeks are usually bad times to get people to show up. Um, some schools, especially their commuter schools, it may be difficult to get people to show up on weekends, so you want to keep that kind of stuff in mind as well. So check your calendar and make sure that you're scheduling on a day that people are more likely to show up. Number six, pick the right room. Uh, this is the biggest mistake and the most common mistake that groups make when choosing a room for a speech. And I want to repeat that. This is the biggest mistake and the most common mistake that groups make when picking a room. Um, to illustrate this, on up here I have these two different tables which represent two different rooms. On the left you have a smaller room with fewer seats. On the right you have a bigger room with more seats. Between the two rooms, you have these little dots that represent people showing up to a speech. The number of people in each room is equal. Now, between the two rooms, on the left and on the right, which room do you think will have a better reaction from the audience? On the left. Which room do you think makes your club look better? One on the left. Which room is going to have more questions and more interaction from the audience? Room on the left. Every time, every time I speak, going to a small packed room is always, always, always better than a big empty room, no matter what, no question. I would rather speak to a small packed room. When picking a room, um, you need to ask yourself these kinds of questions. How many people actually come to our events? Um, do people outside of the Atheist Club actually care about this topic? I mean, how much interest does it really have? Um, can we spend a lot of time on promotions? Can we promote off campus? And last, do our group members actually work? And you guys know this. I mean, you, got, you guys know that if your group members are going to, you know, do what they're supposed to do with promotions and things like that. You guys know your club members. Um, so again, I would always prefer the smaller room. Anything more than 150 seats, you are asking for an empty room, you know, in my general experience. Anything more than 150 seats, and you're asking for this. You know? All right. Now, for the last three, this might be totally shocking. This might be revolutionary. But I would like to tell you a really big secret. People can't show up to your event unless you tell them about it. Shocking, right? I know, I know, totally revolutionary. So you need to promote your event because otherwise people can't show up. Tip number 14, closely related to number 13. Promote your event. People cannot show up unless you tell them about it. Tip number 15 closely related to 13 and 14. Promote your event. Um, I show up to campuses for speeches, and I walk around. 
and I look for posters, and I look for your cable, and I look at your Facebook pages, and I like to see what kind of promotions you are doing. It never fails. The more posters you see on a campus, the more people are going to show up. The more cabling you do, the more people are going to show up. It's just the way it works. Um, you want to do social media, of course. You know, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. I don't know all that stuff. You guys know all that stuff. Um, obviously, you want to do social media. Um, you want to put up posters, not just on, around your school, but around your community as well. Um, that put that uh, picture on the top right um, is a coffee shop where they promote local events. You can take your posters and stack them up there. A lot of local businesses like to promote local events. On the bottom left, you have tabling supplies. Tabling is probably the most effective way of reaching people on your campus. You get to interact one-on-one -on -one with people walking by. Um, it's a great, a, a lot of people just ignore posters. They ignore all these things plastered up around them because there's just too many of them anyway, right? So um, tabling is one of those great ways of reaching people. Um, when you do table, um, it's also great to have the actual poster for the event there so that people can associate that poster with your event. So when they walk around later, they remember, oh yeah, I talked to that person about this thing and you know, here's a reminder for them. Um, and on the bottom right um, is, uh, it's called an alt-weekly newspaper. Uh, actually, I got it, picked up a copy before coming in. Um, Besides using social media, you also want to use traditional media as well. Don't forget newspapers, uh, radio stations, local television stations. Um, I've gotten uh, NPR to promote, um, speaking of NT Santa Cruz once. Um, I don't have time to talk about all the different ways you can promote your event, but um, at the end here I will have a link um, to something that I wrote up about great ways to promote your event, things you may not have thought of. Um, Local community newspapers like this love promoting local events. That's why they exist. So, are you, are you waiting again? Oh, you're not, sorry, I thought you were waiting. Say, shut up, Ted, it's time to move on. All right, um, so anyway, here, you know, I'll just show the link right there. Um, if you have questions about promotions and, and how you can promote your event, feel free to contact me. Even if it's not my speaking event, um, I've been doing this for like three years. Um, I've learned a lot of things myself. So um, earlier, or last year, I wrote an article um, that kind of is basically this talk put in a, a written form. Underneath that, I created an open Google document that anyone can look at online, um, ideas on how to promote your events, um, traditional and social media, tabling, and things like that. I believe tomorrow is the session on tabling, um, so you should send one of your group members to go to that. And the last one is just uh, my blog. So anyway. Um, that's basically it, guys. Uh, thank you for coming out. And do you have any questions? Cool. All right.